Yeah, good morning. Uh, my name is Eric Himmelreich. I work for Red Hat as a principal software engineer and team lead in the OCM group. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how we use GitOps in the OCM organization uh, to help us scale. Um, I'd like to start with a story, a um, bit, bit of background. Before I worked for Red Hat, uh, I was a software consultant for a few years, and then oftentimes I would be on a three or six month assignment where I was set to join another team, be productive, and, and then leave. And I've kind of lost count of the number of times where you know, I show up on site at a client on a Monday morning with my computer, ready to get started, and you know, I don't have my access to whatever systems. Uh, so I'm stuck, you know, waiting for a couple days to get access, you know, for their IT to set things up. Um, and so uh, I guess I can talk about definitions. Um, you know, what is GitOps? Uh, basically what we're talking about is putting a lot of YAML files in a Git repository as the source of truth uh, and then having a reconciliation process that runs often um, to go apply those files. Um, so I'd like to uh, maybe start by looking through some examples. Uh, this OCM resources repository we've been using for about three or four years um, to help onboard and offboard people into uh, the OpenShift cluster manager group. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about the structure. There's a ton of files in here. As I mentioned, there's a reconciliation process. Um, it's a Go program. But I think what's more interesting to look at here is the data directory. Um, we have a ton of YAML files in here defining users and organizations and you know, what information they should have access to uh, in OCM. Uh, so you see we've got three environments, production uh, and, uh, and a couple pre-prod environments, stage and integration. Um, and I think uh, maybe the easiest place to start is look at an onboarding task. How does that work? So, you know, you show up to a new job and you need access to certain systems. Uh, at most places, um, you know, you file a ticket with IT and wait, or it's a manual process um, that somebody does. Uh, instead, what we've got here in OCM resources is uh, uh, a merge request. Okay, uh, so this person's being onboarded. There's a JIRA ticket linked with even more details. Um, they open the merge request, uh, and we can look at the changes here. Um, so I'm going to go kind of fast, and I'll try to leave some time for questions at the end, um, but there's, there's a lot going on here in this file. Um, so we've got a schema defined, uh, so we validate the structure of all the YAML files. Um, there's a user ID identifying the person, uh, as, as well as the second user ID, and then uh, the most important part here is the roles defined. Uh, so this person needs SRAP roles and SRAP uh, developer permissions uh, in the staging environment, and then you know, we've got metadata about you know, user ID, uh, what country they're working from. Uh, and as I mentioned, we have the JIRA link there for even more context. And if you just kind of look at the merge request, you can see who opened it, uh, who it was approved by, and who it was merged by. And you can see down here at the bottom, um, every time someone supplies some YAML to get onboarded, uh, we have a validation process to make sure the YAML will apply cleanly in, in the environment. And then we can see who approved it and who merged it. Um, so what's, what's good about this versus, you know, the traditional IT process is uh, this is, you know, auditable, it's self-service, um, it's very quick to reconcile uh, ver versus kind of the, the other way of doing things, filing a ticket with IT and kind of waiting. Um, I'd like to go through another example. So that's, that's basically users. We also model uh, organizations in here. Um, and so uh, just, just thinking about the normal flow of developing a product, um, you know, maybe you have some feature that's not ready for production yet or should only be exposed to a few users. Uh, that's the merge request we have here. Um, it's adding a capability to a specific organization. And uh, I'm gonna go quick here, but we have a schema where we validate uh, the YAML structure uh, we have an organization which is just a group of users. Um, uh, we've got a number of things like access to quota, 
uh, which is uh, you know, OpenShift Cluster Manager, create and manage your clusters. Um, part of that is getting quota uh, to do so. Uh, and the interesting part here is this last line here, which says uh, you know, we're going to define this key and value, uh, install config override, and set it to true. Um, so that's, that's a way through GitOps to enable you know, some optional functionality uh, for a subset of your users. You could think of, you know, if you're building, um, building features and they're pre-production, not quite ready for all customers, um, you could enable that through GitOps. Uh, okay, so I've, I've gone through, you know, kind of two basic examples here about how to define the YAML, self-service, users can submit it, you can see who approved it and merged it um, from an auditing perspective. Uh, I'd like to briefly go through the reconciliation process. Um, and there's a lot here, so I'm just going to kind of go quick through it. Uh, the reconciliation process is it's just a Go program that parses the YAML and runs many times a day. Um, so we're looking at the YAML data and using it as a source of truth. Um, so it's going to make API calls to the system to you know, make sure that user had SREP roles or that uh, organization had that specific capability. Um, and so th there's a lot here, but basically it validates the YAML. Um, and then uh, this, is, this is a lot of install and setup steps. Uh, but you can see here, here we're sort of starting to get to the output. We're going to validate all of the YAML um, and then move on to the reconciliation phase. Um, uh, so it's checking that everything in the YAML is still in the system uh, via API calls to OCM. So, Make sure that organization has quota capabilities. Make sure that user has uh, those two roles assigned. And uh, you know what, what's nice as well is we have kind of a, an audit log here of every action it's taking. Uh, so you get timestamps, who requested this change, when did the change go into place. Uh, so all of that information is uh, quite useful to have. Um, if you think about like security and compliance certifications. Uh, having a formal process like this uh, is required. Uh, so GitOps is uh, one way to do that. Um, and I'd like to also mention that, uh, you know, we've been using this, for this process for about three years. It's grown over that time. Um, and uh, so we're starting to automate more and more tasks, which would be manual, uh, which, is, which has come in handy as we've, you know, hired more and more engineers. So I'd like to look at another example. Uh, here, here we've got uh, a person in support, you know, needs access to support OSC and ROSA, okay? Um, and we can, we can look at the change here. Again, it's that user file. Here's a user ID, needs access to these roles in this environment, um, and, and that's about it. So uh, here, the interesting part is if we look at the activity on the MR, you know, we've got that um, validation job that runs to make sure the YAML will apply cleanly. So there's a couple pushes there, just getting the structure quite right. Uh, and then the interesting part here is uh, this comment uh, by the OCM resources bot that says, hey, hey, the YAML looks fine, but you need an approval comment uh, from your manager. Um, so this used to be a manual process where we'd ask people to get that approval. We're starting to automate it. Um, uh, so uh, so it's very flexible. You can, you can kind of start small and then add more automation uh, as you need it. Um, another interesting thing that this bot user takes care of is uh, I've talked a little bit about like onboarding, hiring new engineers and so on. Another process is, uh, you know, somebody leaves for another job or maybe they transfer to a different department at uh, Red Hat. Uh, so in terms of like security and compliance, um, you know, you need to make sure when somebody leaves, you lock down their access. It's very important. Uh, so as part of uh, this reconciliation process, uh, we've got it set up to run three times a day, and it, you know, checks for any users that have left and revokes their permissions uh, in uh, OCM. Uh, let's see. So I've got a, f a few more examples and details I can talk about. Um, you know, somewhere else, this, this GitOps um, style of project came in handy was I uh, got a request to do quarterly access audits um, from some of the uh, compliance uh, folks. Um, so, you know, here I've added an auditing command. Um, 
you can configure a list of you know, permissions that, that are considered you know, sensitive or um, elevated, and then this audit command will produce a list of users who have those permissions, um, and then the compliance folks can take a look at that, make sure it's the right list of users, and remove anybody who shouldn't be there, um, and so on. Uh, so that's the audit command. Um, uh, another benefit of taking this GitOps approach would be uh, the fact that you know we, we had a situation where uh, I talked about those three environments, production, stage, integration. Uh, we had to move our integration environment to new infrastructure. In terms of GitOps, um, it was very simple. Just point this repository at a different integration environment and run the reconciliation loop. Um, rather than having to think about how do we migrate the data or having somebody do that manually. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it was quite straightforward to change the URL for integration right there. Um, the last sort of benefit I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, taking this GitOps approach, putting your data in YAML in a repository, um, is that if you follow this process, uh, you, you get some other benefits, like think about, uh, I mentioned quota for clusters. Um, you know, if you have a cluster and you want to install an add-on, you can request quota here through YAML. So instead of having to build another program to get, you know, analytics about who's using this, these add-ons, where is it, you can do a lot by searching the human readable YAML in the Git repository. Um, so, so that was a lot, and those are some of the benefits. Um, Anybody have any questions? Uh, sure, I think saw your hand first. Yeah, so we're basically storing density management directly in the YAML files because I assume there are files such as one file, one future file, or whatever, but YAML, I don't know, so, it was readable, but. <laughs> sure, uh, yeah, so the question was about like, is this inventory management in YAML? Um, I guess the question is about what does the number mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, the, it's the, Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. So I think, uh, and this is shown, this is defined in the schema files, but uh, those, are, those are quantities rather than, um, than you know, inf inventory management. So it's, you know, somebody saying, I need to install 100 copies of, you know, this add-on. Um, does that make sense? No, what was the file name? Oh, uh, yes. So the, the file name uh, is uh, the ID for the organization. It's uh, internal ID, yeah. Um, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the question about how to manage user data, like usernames, uh, uh, email addresses, names of the users, because they will be public and it's maybe not what users want. Sure, yeah, so, um, y you know, we, we've gone with uh, username for these files. You, you, Oh, I'm sorry, repeat the question. The question is about how to, uh, uh, looking at the user files, there's emails, um, other maybe sensitive information, maybe users don't wanna have that public. Um, we've gone with usernames here, which, uh, yeah, is, it, it was a, de a decision, a choice. Um, it's what uniquely identifies the user in our system. So you could identify them with, uh, you know, another, an ID, you know, an anonymous ID, that would be fine too. Uh, like like we've done with organizations, we're just using an ID in the file name there. Yeah, but it kind of defeats the purpose because you see ID of a user A B C D, and you don't know who that person is and to whom sure. you're approving the access, for instance. Yeah. So the question is about using uh, you know ID or username, and uh, I, I think what what you're saying there is yeah we're we're using the username for that reason like. In this repository, we don't have a reason to keep anything secret, really. Uh, sure, go ahead. Um, how do you provide documentation to the users so that they know that they have to add exactly, for example, this line, add on the new operator with capital letters, not with Sure. Yeah, so the question is about, like, how do you teach users to use this? Uh, how do they know that, you know, they have to specify this add-on and uh, in this format. Uh, what I haven't shown here is a lot of teams have, as part of their onboarding uh, documentation, uh, 
go to OCM resources, open uh, merge requests with the YAML file like this. Um, so, uh, so, so it's it's in the other teams, uh, you know, onboarding documents. And the other thing you can do is, you know, it's a Git repository, so you can, uh, if you're looking for examples, you can just browse and see what other people have done. All right, and thanks so much. I think we're out of time. <laughs>